welcome back to the channel and today we're talking transformers and we're talking bumblebee the movie the blu-ray dvd and digital release now details have begun to appear online and i've been keeping an eye out for this because i can't wait to get my hands on bumblebee so i can watch it one more time and i'm sure you feel the same and we're going to get into the details and talk about what is on the Blu-ray, DVD and digital release. But before we get into it, I want to make sure you are subscribed to the channel with the notification bell turned on so you stay up to date with all my Transformers content. Now the source of this content comes from comicbook.com. So if you want to read up more about this, make sure you check the link via the description box below. But the major detail is the release date because Bumblebee the movie comes to digital platforms on March 19th. And that's not too far away considering the movie is still out at cinemas at the moment. In fact, that's a rather quick turnaround. So Bumblebee comes to digital platforms on March 19th and then it will hit 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray and DVD on April 2nd. So here is the packaging for the Blu-ray, DVD and digital release of Bumblebee the movie and I'm sure we'll get more versions of this as we approach that March and April release date and I'm not entirely sure if the March and April release date is worldwide or whether it's just for the US but if I find out more detail I will post it in the description of this video. But this is the cover officially released by Paramount Pictures of the packaging for the Blu-ray, DVD and digital release of Bumblebee and it's a revamp of the posters which we saw for the marketing campaign when Bumblebee hit cinemas. Now I like it, I think it looks good, I think Bumblebee looks great, Hattie Steinfeld looks great, you see the addition of the Volkswagen Beetle in the bottom corner, then in the background you've got Shatter and Dropkick, the bridge from the final scene of Bumblebee the movie, and also I believe that's Blitzwing taking off to the sky. I could be wrong, if I am, let me know in the comment section below, but there's one thing I'm not very keen on, and I didn't like it in the poster, and I'm disappointed that it's on the cover of the Blu-ray DVD and digital release, it's the shot of John Cena. I just don't like it, it's my personal preference. I would have preferred if they'd gone with this shot from this poster of John Cena as Agent Burns. I just think it suits his character much better. But that's just me being picky. What do you think of the Blu-ray, DVD and digital cover for Bumblebee the movie? Let me know in the comment section below. And indeed, it was fun, action-packed and exciting. Now before we get into the detail of the bonus and special features of the Blu-ray DVD and digital release, let's take a look at the Steel Book Edition for the 4K Ultra HD version of Bumblebee the movie. And this is it. Now the artwork which you see for this is actually an exclusive from Comic-Con when Bumblebee went to Comic-Con. This was a poster that you could pick up exclusively. So they've rolled this over to the Steel Book Edition. And my view on it, again, just my personal preference, not keen. Yes, the artwork is cool, but I would have preferred a great shot of B from the movie. I just would have preferred that. And I also don't particularly like the white Bumblebee text. I'm so used to seeing it in the yellow. I just kind of wish they'd gone with that. But nevertheless, it is an exclusive and I wouldn't be picking this up anyway at this moment in time because I don't have a 4K Ultra HD setup. If I did, I'd definitely pick it up because the fact is those Cybertron scenes are going to look amazing in 4K Ultra HD. So if you've got the setup, I get it just for that. But the actual cover itself, I'm not that keen on. Again. I would have preferred something with Bumblebee actually from the movie. But what do you think and what are you going to be picking up? Do you like the 4K Ultra HD cover? Do you like the exclusivity? Because it was a poster which was going to be sold at Comic-Con only. So I don't know if it's appeared online and you can pick it up now online. But that was the deal with this artwork. 
and now it's been rolled over to the Steelbook release. So you've seen both the covers for the Blu-ray, DVD and digital release and the 4K Ultra HD Steelbook. Let's now look at the bonus features which cover across them both. And all we can do at this point is speculate what these mean because it's just titles for each section. But it is going to be interesting to see if it backs up any more of the prequel detail before Bumblebee became a reboot and if we'll get any special features which we'll touch upon that this was a prequel prior to the decision being made that this was going to be, you know, taken forward in a new direction. So the first thing that we've got is a Sector 7 archive. And again, we can only speculate, but that would be interesting because maybe if we're going to delve into what Sector 7 know about the Transformers, apparently with the 1985 setup that we got from Bumblebee the movie, this was the first time that this section of Sector 7 knew about Transformers. But could they have rolled in more detail prior to this with it being a prequel? So for example, could they show shots of Megatron Frozen? and then transported to the Hoover Dam. Could that be a part of the Sector 7 archive? That would be very interesting and it would also be nice to know what other areas the Sector 7 team worked upon because I'm sure it just can't be, you know, they're a special unit. So what else does that special unit do? So I'm quite interested to see what that's all about. The other thing I would mention about Sector 7, which I took away personally from Bumblebee the movie, was although it seemed like, you know, this was the first time they'd seen a Transformer, and I don't know if this was just to get into that 80s vibe, but it didn't always feel like they were that shocked about the Transformers. So there was always, to me, that feeling that they could have been a little bit more surprised, uh, and they were quite happy to negotiate with the Decepticons. Those sort of things for me, whether it was that quirky 80s vibe or not, if it wasn't, then could it be after all that they were aware of other Transformers touching down? And again, some of those details were removed to sacrifice this being a reboot over a prequel. We'll just have to wait and see, but I quite like the sound of that. Anyway, let's move on. And next up, we've got Agent Burns, Welcome to Sector 7. So we're going to get maybe a deep dive into the background of Agent Burns, which I think is good, particularly with rumours that we might get a sequel to Bumblebee. And if we do, will John Cena make a return as Agent Burns? I feel he's a character that could do much more in the bigger picture of this franchise. So if they do want to take that Sector 7 element forward, then John Cena is the perfect fit for that and it would be great to know more about Agent Burns. So we'll move on. Sector 7 Adventures, the battle at Half Dome, all new comic motion. So that's quite interesting. I'm not entirely sure what that will be. If you know, let me know in the comment section below, but it does sound quite interesting that we're going to get to see uh, another battle with Sector 7, so that's quite interesting in itself. Moving on, deleted and extended scenes. Now, I think that's the area that everybody wants to get stuck into. Whether or not we will get a deleted Megatron scene is yet to be known, but I really do think if Travis Knight and the team had worked on that scene and it was in but it was taken out and it was developed and completed. And then in post-production, they removed it. Please put it in the deleted scenes. I mean, that would sell the DVD, Blu-ray and digital release like hotcakes if people knew they were getting to see this additional Megatron scene that was removed from the final cut of the movie. I just know it. That's money. So I hope that we will get it. There was lots of talk that that Megatron scene was planned, but it never came to fruition how far in development it got. So if it did make the movie and then was pulled out, um, I hope they put it back in for the deleted and extended scenes. 
Now let's continue outtakes. There'll be fun. John Cena is a right laugh. So I've known John Cena in terms of his wrestling days and he's always been quite comical. And from the looks at some exclusive shots we saw previously, uh, which uh, WWE released with John Cena being on set of Bumblebee the movie, it seems like he had a real good time. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing those outtakes too. But next we've got B-Vision, the Transformers robot of Cybertron. So that sounds interesting, getting to look at some of the Transformers that we saw in that brief cameo of Cybertron. Again, I'm only speculating what that could be. I'm not saying what it is, but I'd love to see that, getting to understand the different Transformers, Optimus Prime, some of the Decepticons, Shockwave, Soundwave. If they have, you know, profiles of those Autobots and Decepticons, that would be very cool. Next, we've got bringing Bumblebee to the big screen. Well, that's great. We're going to get an insight from that, and I'm sure we'll hear from Travis Knight. We've got the story of Bumblebee. Again, I'm sure that will spend time with uh, the writers, Christina Hodson, and also with the director, Travis Knight, again. Then we've got the stars align. I'm not sure what that is. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. We've got Bumblebee goes back to G1. That sounds cool because it would be great to hear the inspiration maybe from the designs of the Autobots Decepticons, particularly for B, because we know that they took elements of Michael Bay's version, but what was Travis Knight looking at from the G1 version that he wanted to build in to Bumblebee? So that would be cool. And then we've got back to the Beetle. And we all know that the bee and um, beetle is iconic, so that will be good. And then we've got California cruising down memory lane. Dunno, you work that one out. But those are the details of the bonus and special features for Bumblebee the movie. Again, we can't really uh, delve into the facts of what these are. We can only speculate about them, but the titles are all very intriguing. And they are all things that I would like to see. So I'm quite looking forward to this. Um, I will probably pick up um, the Blu-ray, DVD and digital version unless there is another steelbook version that catches my eye. And just to let you guys know, because I'm from the UK, I did actually see this on Zavi. Now, this is an alternative version, but... They haven't quite shored up the cover yet. I did see that it was to be determined. So the cover that you see here, do you prefer that to the 4K Ultra HD cover or not? Um, but this is what Zavi have put on their steel book and it's an alternative, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it does then flip over to what we've seen with the 4K Ultra HD release. But it might be worth before you go out and you know make your pre-orders to shop around a bit and if you want me to look into you know some of the best deals some of the best bargains because there are some quite cool things i've seen you know uh, the actual movie coming with a t-shirt or coming with something else something cool some cool memorabilia for bumblebee if you want me to look into that and bring you guys the best deals you know hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below but for the majority, it's not long to wait now until the Blu-ray, DVD and digital release of Bumblebee. Very exciting. It's going to finish at the cinema and then boom, it's going to be in your hands or a digital release, you know, because you can't get that in your hands. But there you go. Anyway, what do you think? What are you going to be picking up? Are you going to be inclined towards the standard or are you going to be going towards the Steelbook and the 4K Ultra HD? What do you think of the covers overall? What do you think the special features are? List them and let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. But for now, all that's left to be said is please rate, comment, and subscribe. This is Delzinski, signing out. <laughs>